Hello, my name is Alex Philly, and today I'm asking the question, what is Master of Magic? Master of Magic is a game published by Microprose, released in 1994 on DOS and Windows. Primarily it's a turn-based strategy game. The main maps are shown from a top-down perspective, but the battles are shown from an isometric perspective. In theme, this game is like a mix between Warcraft and Civilization. You start the game by picking a wizard. Each wizard has their own set of spells. You also pick the race your army starts with, whether that be humans, halflings, orcs, lizard men, and so on. There's a variety of difficulty levels, and you can also choose how big the map is, and you can choose how many opponents you have. At the start of the game, you're given a city. The city will grow and expand, and for the most part remains your capital city, although this can change later on in the game. Like in Civilization, you can construct a variety of different buildings. These buildings depend on the terrain. For example, you have to be next to the sea in order to construct a shipyard. Some buildings increase the amount of gold or mana generated. Other buildings provide food bonuses or bonuses to production. And finally, there's other buildings which allow you to recruit different characters. For example, if you build the stables, then you're unable to create cavalry units. As you progress through the game, you unlock new spells, research more spells, create an army, clear out monster layers, attack other players, capture cities, explore the map. As you encounter enemy wizards, you can trade with them, you can swap spells, or you can choose to go to war. As you can tell from the title of the game, magic is very important. You can use spells to summon units, cast spells at enemy troops, cast bonuses to your own troops, alter the terrain, all of which takes out of your mana pool. Some spells take a certain amount of mana, and for summoned creatures, they require a certain amount of mana to survive. If you run out of mana, then those summoned creatures will disappear. You can also increase mana by building shrines in towns, or capturing the mana pools located around the map. Speaking of the map itself, there are actually two maps on every game. There's the normal earthly plane, but then there's also the other plane. You can sometimes find better items and treasure down there, but there's also stronger enemies as well, so it's a bit of a trade-off. And there's a certain way to cross the dimensions, either with the use of portals or with the use of spells. Another important thing to keep your eye on is gold. Gold is your major currency for the game. You can use it to speed up construction, you can use it to hire mercenaries, and you also use it for the upkeep of soldiers. If you run out of money, your soldiers will abandon you one by one. There's also food to take into consideration. If you, have, if you don't have enough food, then your armies will start dying. This often means going to a city and deactivating the builders so that you have more farmers and you can have more food. Certain races are easier to use than others. Certain units are much stronger than their equivalents. As well as mercenaries, occasionally you'll discover a hero. A hero is a special character which typically is strong and knows a few spells. A unique thing about the heroes is that you can give them equipment, whether they be weapons, armour, or special amulets. The heroes also level up, improving their skills and abilities. Every army can consist of nine separate entities. You can also transport characters on boats. Some characters can also walk on water, or they can fly. As well as invading enemies, you also have to protect your cities from intruders. There are five separate kinds of magic. Each starting wizard has their own set of spells from a variety of different magic types. At the start of the game, all your units are weak and they've not experienced battle. It's important to progress slowly, build up your armies, make sure the veterans survive, and then summon special monsters and construct buildings which allow you to build better units. 
this game is loads of fun and if you're looking for a combination of civilization building, diplomacy and fantasy combat then this is definitely a good choice of game and I would definitely recommend it. Thanks for watching.